Speaker, our first item is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Molsol, for the final time, will you read our mission statement? The mission of the Marshall Public School District is to educate, support, and prepare all learners for success. Thank you. Nicely done, Bill. <laughs> our next item, number four, is approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. A motion by Jeff and seconded by Bill Swope to approve the agenda. Any additions or corrections? If not, I'll call for the vote. And that is approved. Next item number five is our public forum. Anybody from the public want to approach the board? Seeing none. Item number six, our discussion items. First review of uh, policies 101 to 104. Any questions on those? It sounds like a question maybe. <laughs> <laughs> item 6.2, resignation of school board member Bill Moso, you guys have seen the letter, so I will formally accept his resignation and we'll kind of tie this into the Tiger Spotlight, our next item. On behalf of the Marshall School Board, we would like to take a minute to thank Bill Moso for his time served on the school board. Bill began serving as a school board member representative, has been serving for a, as a school board representative for the past 16 years and has been doing been a strong advocate for Marshall Public Schools District. Bill, thank you for your years of service and we wish you the best in your next endeavor. Thank you very much. You gotta go take a picture. I don't need to go take the picture. We're not going to move here. So. I was moving. <laughs> Stacy. Stace. That's a good move for him. It's a good move. Started kindergarten when I started this at that time. <laughs> <laughs> a couple years ago. Our next item is we will move to a closed session uh, under the attorney client <coughs> privilege to discuss pending litigation under Minnesota Statute 13D.05. So I will need a motion for that. So, so moved. I'll second. Motion by Jeff and a second by Bill Molso to move into closed session. Any further discussion? I'll call for the vote. And that is approved. Jeremy, if I could just make a quick statement about that before we actually move into the closed session. Yep. Okay. Um, the open meeting law does require us to make a brief statement about why we're closing attorney client privilege before we move into that session. Uh, so this session is necessary to have a confidential conversation with my clients in order to share legal advice and develop strategy surrounding a pending litigation matter where Mary Keith Thomas is the plaintiff. The matter will be mediated um, in the coming weeks and our discussions will surround that mediation. Thank you, Christy. Thanks, Christy. Care had leased that for a while. They have moved out. Keiko has expressed interest in that, and um, we've worked with the owner of the facility, and they are open to this lease. This will be until we move out next summer that they would be subleasing the space from us. Very good. Any further discussion? I'll call for the vote. Is 
approved. Our next action item is approval of application and timeline to fill Bill's vacancy, to fill the board vacancy. Um, I don't know if you guys had a chance to look at that. There is one typo, though. The, the second line says we're going to post it from December 5th to December 28th. That should be the 21st, right? 21st. Okay. Yep. <coughs> so does it look okay to everybody how we're going to fill this position? <laughs> Good to me. I'll share that we have worked with MSBA on this process. Um, there is not a formal process laid out by MSBA, so we've worked just on kind of best practice on, um, on this because Bill's position is up for election next November. Um, the board can approve this process and appoint somebody to fill that vacancy until November, and then any um, candidate would have to run um, through the full election the next fall. So we'll be seeking... Um, candidates to run and we would appoint them as of January 2nd and then at the January 2nd meeting um, we can assign them to different committees and such the candidate that um, the board then selects or anyone who who runs will be reviewed by the board chair he will select up to three candidates to be interviewed on the meeting on the second the those three would do an interview during our open meeting and then the board will do a roll call vote that evening to appoint somebody to the board for those, that, that period of time. Are those interviews open? Like They'll be open, open interview. Yep. We'll okay. do it during the board meeting. Okay. So they can listen to each other. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I'll make a motion to approve this timeline. Second. Any further discussion? Yep, second. If not, I'll call for the vote. I'll share that with that too, uh, Mr. Chairman, that the um, application will be available on our school website. Also, if anybody has an interest and wants to know more about it, they could reach out to the district office and we can forward it to to them as well. So, Very good. Thank you. <coughs> Next item is approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Bill Moso, second by Bill Swope to approve the consent agenda. I will call for the vote. Is approved. Any board reports or updates from anyone? Uh, we had a facilities uh, committee meeting last week. Um, we discussed the uh, Keiko Baton Studio sublease that you um, we had just approved. Uh, Dion kind of laid out our long-term facilities maintenance plan for the next year, what we accomplished this year, and what's coming up in the next, and then. Um, what was the third one? Oh, the CTI mm -hmm. open house coming up. So, punch list is almost completed on that, and mm -hmm. ready to go. So, had somebody comment to me in the community about all the cars parked out at the new CTI. So, so, so. he said, "You guys must be doing business out there now." So, <laughs> yep. I said, "Yep, it's going good." So. Any other reports or updates? Next item, it is 6 o'clock. It's time for the truth in taxation. Dion, the floor is yours. <clears throat> All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, this is our annual truth in taxation presentation. Um, state requires us to do this uh public meeting in between the 24th and the 30th um, after 6 o'clock p.m. And it can be part of our regular meeting as it is today. Uh, the, present the presentation has to be about our current budget, prior year actual revenue and expenditures, proposed property tax levy, uh, including the increase, and then specific purposes of the increases. Uh, just to point out some of the changes um, that the state had during their legislative um, last year, we had the 2% increase or $135 in the 22-23 last year's school year. Uh, this year we were fortunate enough to get 4%, um, which um, we appreciate the increase and it's a great start and hopefully a good conversation to keep going 
um, because as you guys know, the state general education revenue has not kept up with inflation. Um, our current fiscal year 23-24, which we are in, would need an additional $1,282 per pupil or 17.9% per pupil increase just to keep up with inflation. This kind of gives you an idea of what that looks like uh, when we compare our general ed to the inflationary um, rate. Uh, unfortunately, it keeps going up, and I know we all know that from the gas pump and the grocery store, um, and when you, you're out and about. Unfortunately, the projection in 25 um, shows us the largest gap. So I show this one every year because our levy cycle gets a little confusing. Um, we're gonna follow the orange line. So from June to December of 2023, we work on the levy. We submit figures to MDE so the initial levy amounts can be calculated. Then the board um, approves or had approved the maximum levy back in September. Between September and October, we do any adjustments that need are needed. December, we do the truth of taxation, and then hopefully um, the levy is approved uh, into, at the next meeting in December. If you look at the next line down, uh, once the levy um, is certified, we start working on the 24-25 budget, the preliminary budget. Um, we work on that, typically the preliminary budget in January, and then we do the presentation in June. Um, from July of 2024 to June of 2025 is the fiscal year 25 school year. That's when the levy is actually recognized that we're presenting tonight. Finally, the orange line on the bottom is from July to November of 2025 when the levy work is presented um, and we do the audit um, and then the cycle just starts over again. So we have um, six different fund balances. One of the fund balances uh, that we don't go over is our construction fund, which is fund six. Um, the next few slides we'll be doing, we'll be explaining um, a comparison to, um, of the prior year um, actuals, since our audit is done, of the revenue and expenditures uh, compared to the 23-24 original budget. And just want to point out the numbers are the original budget. We're currently working on our revised budget. So this shows the revenue um, actuals. General fund revenue is up due to the increase in the general revenue formula and our enrollment. The food service revenue estimate budget increases due to uh, going from paid breakfast and lunch to the free lunches. We should see an increase and we have seen an increase in meals served. Capital revenue decrease is almost 500,000. That's due to us receiving that solar grant um, funds. And then this just shows the prior numbers uh, in a graph form which you can see that the uh, projected revenue is increasing um, general funds from 22, 23. Uh, this graph here shows it by source. Um, <clears throat> state funding increase from last year to this year due to the formula. Federal funds, you're seeing a decrease due to us spending less or actually um, using up the rest of our ESSER funds or COVID funds this year. Expenditure comparison, um, general funds increase from 22 to 23 um, are right in line with past increases, right around that three to 4%. Food services mentioned prior along with the revenue expenditure should increase. Um, also with the increased meal served, we should see the revenue also increasing. Capital outlay estimates increase due to some of our projects that were scheduled to be completed in June of 2023 but ended up being uh, completed in July of 2023, so they get posted to this year instead of last year. This shows a comparison by funds. Um, expenditures, there's really no change in between the years. If you can see, they all stay the same. That's typical. Expenditures by program. This slide is a breakdown of the 23-24 budgeted general fund expenditures by program code. Um, as you can see, we're in the business of teaching students um, and almost half of our budget, 49.16, goes to our regular um, instruction. 
The second largest goes to special education, which is 19.07, and then 10.1% is budgeted for sites and buildings. You can see the breakdown in the other, the other programs there. Expenditures by object code. This slide breaks down the general fund by object code. And again, a majority of our expenditures goes to salary and benefits, as it does for every school, uh, which is a little bit over 85.29% um, of our budget in salary and benefits. Uh, each year, we have to do a budget publication, which shows our last year actuals to this year's um, budget and this goes out on our website as well as posted in the independent, which it has already been done. So our tax levy um, comparison, these are the final numbers of our fund, um, by fund of our levy limitation and certification for payable 24. Again, these levy revenue, as I explained earlier, won't be recognized and received until 24-25 school year. As you can see, our general levy is increasing 11.5, but our overall levy is actually decreasing by 0.48%. Later, we'll break down that increase and decrease between funds. And then this just shows a graph of the levy distribution between the debt service, community service in general. Um, I will say our pie shrunk a little bit on our debt service, which is good, um, thanks to the high school uh, being paid off and we'll see that actually going down a little more. Uh, this is uh, our levy history going back. Um, basically, I just wanted to show this to see, show the, show the board. You know, in 1920, we had the passing of the building referendum. Um, over the last 10 years, um, actually over the past three years, an average of 0.94% increase. Um, so I think we're doing well for our public, um, our taxpayers. So just a little property tax background. Um, every owner um, receives their property taxes, um, taxing their jurisdictions in which the property is located. Each taxing jurisdiction sets their own tax levy often based on the limits of the state law. The county sends out the bills, collects the taxes from the property owners, and then distributes them back to um, basically the jurisdictions, which we're one of. Um, school district property tax. Uh, key steps in the process are summarized on the next slide. Any of the steps may, be, may affect the taxes um, of a parcel of property but district has control over uh, only one of the seven steps, which we'll show you. So I'm not gonna go through all the steps, uh, but basically it kind of goes back and forth between the county auditor um, and the state, and then MDE calculates the limits um, and formulas, and then finally on step six is when the school district adopts a proposed levy uh, based on the limits and steps five and then after the public hearing, um, we'll have the vote at the next the next meeting. And I'll go over some of the things that we do that, that affects the, the levy, how the levy's calculated. So here are some things that cause changes in the, uh, in, uh, the taxpayer's property tax, whether it goes up or down. Um, change in market value, you're gonna see that that's a big one uh, this year. State legislature uh, had some effect Increase and decrease in enrollment. We've seen kind of a level on that from us from last year, so that didn't affect a lot of things. Voter approved referendums and then school board action. Um, this we received from Lyon County. Um, as you can see in 22-23, the estimated market value has an overall increase of 11.98%. This again is set by the city or the county assessor. If an individual has any questions in regards to their property tax market value, they should contact the Lyon County. Um, so each year I, I try to grab some samples um, just to point out the different areas of the property tax uh, to take a look at. This sample is a copy of the property tax form for a property tax owner or property owner that should have received 
I uh, just want to point out a couple of areas. First at the top, it shows the taxable market value. Again, the school district does not control the market value. Uh, below, I separated it out in colors just to point out that the property tax also isn't just the school district. Uh, this is a property uh, owner's example, as you can see, where the Lyon County portion decreases $237.03. Uh, the city portion had increased to $164.83, and the school district's portion decreased to $178.74. Uh, this taxpayer's overall decreased 4.6% um, over the prior year, or $252. Uh, $252. We have had a few questions come in on the school district section of why the voter approved portion has decreased, but the other local levies has increased. With the high school, the 2021A school building bond being paid off in fiscal year 24, uh, the final debt service levy was taxable, payable 2023. It's our goal to keep the level uh, debt service tax from year to year the bond structure is set up to pay off the greater amounts um, on our facility bonds, which had been used for parking lots, indoor air quality at Parkside, um, a boiler and HVAC system at Parkside, along with the middle school HVAC system. So on the proposed tax statements that were mailed out, you can see there's a reduction in the voter approved, which was the high school, and a more of an increase on the other lines, which is our facility maintenance bonds. Any questions on that? Okay. Uh, this is just another sample. A um, little larger increase in the market value. The last one was a little uh, close to 7,000. This is a little over 24,000. You can see in this sample, the Lyon County um, portion decreased 146.42. The city's portion uh, increased 251.92, and the school portion decreased uh, 132.84. Overall increase was only $22. Uh, something we want to point out uh, was very good for our region is the ag tax, which went into permanent law in 2017. This affects our Fund 7 uh, debt levies, reduces uh, reductions for farmer and timberland owners. It is at 70%. Um, there, was, um, there was talk of trying to increase that, um, but it hadn't gone through legislature, so right now it's at 70%. The revenue from the egg to school comes from the state income sales and other um, tax revenue. So this is just kind of a background of where we came to get to that 70% um, from the past couple of years that had increased each year. So, oops, that didn't make it. That uh, first row should say 2022 uh, total that the Marshall Public School District landowners had saved was around 651,000. I won't go every year, but um, the projected for 2024 is up to 788,752. So you can see um, that definitely has taken uh, a good good turn for our egg, egg land owners. This graph gives another look at how that's increased since 2017 when it took place. Um, so it's definitely increased the right way. Uh, this is another sample. I wanted to pull a couple samples from some ag land property tax. Uh, a few areas of importance on this form. Uh, this property owner's taxable market um, did increase. Should I get the right one? Sorry. Uh, did increase $81,539. And also want to point out uh, its comparison to the next one. This one uh, property was 10.58 acres. Um, <clears throat> second part I want to point out is up on top, the school credit, the bond credit. Um, it's separated out. It doesn't show it at the bottom. It comes off the bottom, but it doesn't show in a separate line. Um, so this landowner received $142.68 credit for the school bond, uh, thanks to the egg um, Egg to school credit. Below I separated out again by the, the county. This person lives in a township and the school district. Uh, the property tax decreased by $21.61. Uh, 
for the county township decreased three dollars and thirty cents and the school district increased sixty one dollars and one cent overall increase to thirty six dollars uh, without the school bond credit would have been around one hundred seventy eight dollars and sixty eight cent credit for uh, overall increase uh, this one here the market value increased uh, five hundred ninety one thousand dollars um, and the acres is a little over 100, it's 160 acres compared to the pre previous one, which was 10 acres. Um, as you can see, the ag land owner is receiving $1,196.68 in the um, ag credit. Blue eye separated again out in colors. The county increase is $445.20, township $146.28, and the school district was er, $526.80 overall of $1,120. But again, the, the market value increased almost $600,000. <clears> so our overall proposed levy, um, as discussed prior, will be decreasing by 0.48%. Uh, it's $38,075.50. Uh, 38, $38,075.53 less than previous year. Um, State requires us to go over why the changes are happening. In our general fund, we're seeing an increase of $442,945.94. Um, the general fund actually decreased a little over $30,000. Our long-term maintenance um, is increasing about $600,000. Um, that is due to the, um, the facility bonds being paid off. Um, some of the facility bonds being paid off that were being paid through general fund, we now get that long-term facilities funds back in the general fund, um, which is good because that gives us a little bit more control of what we're um, using them on. And then the building lease, um, that savings we'll see once Maytech moves out to SMSU, we'll be saving um, some good funds on that move um, going from our current location. Community services uh, showing a decrease of 34,655.63. Legislature had made some additional changes in which the funding formula decreased a portion, um, and that's why you're seeing the decrease in the levy. Debt service a levy change, um, we're seeing a decrease in of a uh, little over $446,000. Um, again, the decrease is mainly because of our lower principal and interest payments on the school um, building payments. Um, and then we're seeing a reduction of 39,000 on our debt excess. So overall, uh, this gives a breakdown of what our proposed levy is. Um, it's the $7,884,609.48. Um, again, to be payable in 24. So our schedule of events, the board approved the maximum levy in September. Uh, Mid-November, we did the proposed tax statements, or the proposed tax statements were mailed out by the county. We're doing the tax, uh, truth of taxation hearing today. And then at the 18th, we'll recommend that the board certify the levy amounts. So now I open it up for any public comments or questions. Anybody have any comments or questions? Thanks, Dion. Thank, Thank you. you for your work on this. Thank you, Dion. Thank you. The next item is adjournment of the meeting. I will adjourn the meeting. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chair.